Yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly what this section of guys needs. It is Jay takes one in the eye there. Right in the eye. <laughs> this is uh, this to me when we were doing these rankings came down to being like the toughest section of guys. Um, I think kind of seven, eight are, are real tough for me. And then leading into nine is, is kind of kind of tough. And then again, kind of 10 and 11 were also pretty tough. But I think there is a little bit maybe of a tear break between just slightly between seven, eight, and nine, and then ten and eleven are a little, little tougher. But kind of which order to put them in. So to kick this thing off at seven, I think I'm going to have to go with Rashad Penny here. We left the last uh, episode. It's got to come off. off the board sometime, right? We, yeah, we left the last episode off saying, you know, don't be mad at us because we didn't take Penny in the top six. Well, I'm, I'm coming back at seven. I think I want to take him here. I, I could like I really like Josh Adams. I could be easily persuaded to take Josh Adams here ahead of Penny. Um, but just on my quick uh, reasoning for taking Penny here, uh, just a recap of what he did. He was number one in rush yards this year, um, number one in yards from scrimmage, uh, number three or number two in touchdowns, depending on where you look. Uh, only second to Devin Singletary from Florida Atlantic. He scored like three years worth of touchdowns. 32 touchdowns in a season <laughs> is pretty silly. Um, and he was number six in rushing attempts. So basically this guy was the workhorse for his team, and he shined doing so. He had so the that, fifth best season of all time with 2,200 that deserves plus rushing yards. a tip of the cap. I think there's only like 20 guys over 2K in – 20, 25 guys over 2K in in the in their in a single season, um, so the, all very impressive things. Like I said, I do like Adams' running style a little bit more than I do Penny's. I think that translates a little better into the NFL style right away. Um, but what I lend Petty the edge here on is I think there's maybe a little bit more versatility right off the rip with him, or at least perceived versatility right off the rip with him. Um, I think he, you know, you saw him kind of in the slot sometimes. You saw him catching balls out of the backfield a lot more than you saw Josh Adams doing so. And I could see maybe Josh getting pegged into that first and second down role and maybe it being easier for Penny off the rip to get involved and, and, and score points for your fantasy team. I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you guys, where do you guys have as, as your number sevens? Oh, man. I think I, I, I want to take Josh Adams at seven. So you like Josh Adams at seven? I think so. <laughs> can you feel the tension in the air right now? I know I can. Well, there's not that much tension because I'm 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 in Camp Adams too. I just I, I think I gotta give a slight nod to to Penny as as we stand right now before this conversation takes place. Um, I get I get the versatility argument. That's that's got to be the best argument here because the perception is that he's a good pass catcher, which I do think he is. Penny, that is. I think he's pretty smooth in the passing game. It's pretty fluid. It's pretty handsy. It's not a ton of production coming from him, but I mean, you saw, I think he saw enough, and I think teams are probably going to feel comfortable with that. And, yeah. I, and I, I think. And he caught it in the senior bowl and scored a touchdown. So <laughs> it was a good looking play. It was <laughs> best, a great play. Best receiver ever. <laughs> it was a great play. It was a good catch. Um, man, I don't know. When it comes to Rashad Penny, I just feel like for every pro, there's like a con. I don't. I don't see. I don't see a, a big con list for Penny. I see there's a, there's a few things that I don't like about him, but I, I do see a large pro list. Um, well, he's got he's got straight line speed. He's got decent straight line speed, but not like game break. He's got Mountain West straight line speed, yeah. not SEC straight line. But speed. But the acceleration isn't really there. Speaking I don't of think. the Mountain West and Penny, let me just what you know. Donnell Pumphrey had one of the best seasons ever last year. For the Aztecs. Yeah, I mean, Pumphrey, Pumphrey came off a, a great year, and I think we mentioned in the podcast uh, when we did the Penny talk about how they're the first tandem to go back-to-back yep. from uh, a 2,000-yard standpoint uh, on the same team, I believe. Um, but what, what's impressive, Pumphrey is, you know, like a buck 80-something, so and so it. it's impressive what he did to get those yards. Um, but what's impressive about um, Penny mm. here is that he's his frame is so he's five eleven and two twenty and just ran for a stupid amount of yards. It wasn't just like some little quick guy who busted a bunch of really long runs. Obviously, Penny busted a bunch of really long runs. We well, did have a lot of long runs. It's impressive that that he did it with the frame that he did it, and and is definitely being pressed, I you know, that. more swiftly into the top rounds of NFL definitely. drafts more, because of he's more, seems. More NFL physically body. bodied, right. ready. You yeah, know. 
Well, he's definitely got the body. He's got, I mean, the, the size and, and weight and the speed, the long speed is pretty attractive. And he, and he did break a lot of long touchdowns. But for that pro, I feel like there's a con that's, that says he didn't break a lot of tackles. Right. And so, like, that's pretty much my biggest knock on this dude is, is that he rarely breaks tackles. Now, I know that Pro Football Focus charted him with four yards after contact which is a pretty solid number, but he ran for, like, so many yards. And, like, a lot of those, like, I could, I can think of a plenty of runs that I could point to where he was, it was some weak, high arm tackle that he just ran right through and then busted off a bunch of yards. It wasn't, like, a consistent every Plowing dudes over. play where he's getting four yards after contact. Right. Um, I, just, I just don't see him creating very much on his own. And so, like... What I saw was a big guy who's kind of freakishly fast once he gets going and running through a bunch of creases created by a San Diego State team that, that was runs, pretty good at runs blocking. The ball, runs the ball well. Versus mediocre competition at best. Right. So I, I would disagree with you. I think he has decent acceleration. I do think that he can create on his own. Um, I think he does have does have some wiggle to his game. I think he's got okay patience. Um, I just I don't enjoy the fact that he is so big framed and doesn't doesn't run more bullish like doesn't run like josh adams runs um and and that's that's the part that makes me really struggle with not taking josh adams because i think josh adams can do everything that this guy can do except he's more physical and just doesn't have quite the you know versatility that you're maybe looking for when you see the reception totals on this on uh adams versus uh penny here all good points but let me play devil's advocate for just a second like Pumphrey had three ridiculous seasons in a row, and then Penny comes in here and has another great season. You did mention the back-to-back 2,000-yard rushing yards for the, the teammates there, which was awesome in the last podcast, pre two podcasts ago. But it's not Penny's fault that he didn't have to run bullish because no. they're running a they're well, running this offense that creates these holes for him. Like I mean, they, you don't have, but th- there, but you do see plenty of times where if he would just run bullishly, then yeah. I mean, you you when you're the biggest baddest dude on the field, you should have the mentality that you can take over the game and you're better than anybody else, and you can just go and get these yards when you want them. And sometimes he does. It's just the consistency of always doing it, especially yeah, against right. the guys that you were playing against week in week out most weeks. And there's like another pro con. Right. Like sometimes he will lower his shoulder, and, and and sometimes he'll get that that good forward movement. But like sometimes he straight leads with his head. Like I saw him try to deliver a blow by like dropping his head into the dude yeah. like that that to me is like come on man like i just think that's he, definitely think, gonna lead to a concussion i think he tries to get too cute is my biggest problem with him is like i think he tries like he gets he is a, he's patient and i think he gets a little too trying to shake you and just just put your show lower your pad level and 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 you know make a make a quick move and, and be decisive and, and go forward um, and that, that's really the my, my biggest knock on him. And then when we talked about it on the on the show, when we did the full breakdown of him, um, was that you know sometimes I think once this just like you said, once this guy gets going and he's and he's rolling, he's really tough to bring down. You give him an alley and he gets he gets rolling down the down the old alley. A crevice, for, forget it. A crevasse. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but if you can get in his way and make him start dancing because he doesn't go straight and like oh this this guy's in my way he tries to dance around him instead of make maybe just make trying to get him slightly off balance and just trying to go through him you would like to see that a little bit more from a guy with his size 220 and, pounds right, i got it's my biggest pet peeve with this versus guy josh yeah. adams who's going to lower that shoulder right. and, and you can say that josh adams had a really good offensive line too which we'll get true. to um but there's plenty of runs where josh adams is carrying dudes and there's nowhere to go and he smashes into him and He'll get you three or four more yards. And, and yeah. I think the balance is better there with Josh Adams. Like, I think you alluded to the balance with Penny. Like, it's not it's not the best. There's a lot of times when you, you can see it and you hear the announcers literally saying, like, tripped up. He was tripped up. Mm-hmm. He was tripped up. Yeah, a little, maybe, maybe slightly clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's cool here because you got a guy that went for two, 2,250 yards and a long of 95, 23 touchdowns and... We're just telling you what we see. A little right. bit clumsy. Well, Trip, I mean, tripped up sometimes. The dude definitely gets what's there. And oh, he sometimes got he got a lot of it. And yeah. sometimes he takes a whole lot more than what's there. And the receiving is a solid plus. I think he's got to improve his pass protection and, and and just maybe he could be something pretty special. Who knows? But I mean you 
you got to be willing to give up your Twinkie for the plum, you know? You got to, <laughs> is the juice worth the squeeze? We're talking about the number seven spot meant. here. The Twinkie it for is, the plum? Yeah, I, I like your plums. Can I give you my Twinkie? <laughs> Those are mine. Hey, that plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, no these, these are, are my plums. plums. <laughs> You well, gotta feel it. You gotta have it. I don't have it for for uh, Rashad we're, Penny. We're on, we're on the same page. We're on the same page then. For for for, I got you now. And and like here's like another thing. Like Twinkie everyone, plum. yeah, I'm, I got you. We're, we're gonna take. Yeah, I mean, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it, will you give up your Twinkie to get that that Rashad Penny plum? Well, I mean, this is this is a really tough one for me. I think I'm gonna stick with Penny at, at seven here. Um, well, let me say one more thing on the media on on the topic because. Everybody freaking loves this dude, and we're going to take some heat even just having him at seven. Well, yeah, I mean, but he's basically I, like the golden child or or the copper right. child or however you want to well, go about it. 220-pound man running for 2,250 yards in college, is, that's got everybody's eye open. Let me just say one thing on, on the subject. Don't let the liberal media tell <laughs> you how to think and feel. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to just take this dude because I know everybody's going to be mad well, at me if I don't. Plus, I mean, people are like, we, we've talked about this a few times. You you can see how many people have watched videos. Mm -hmm. And when you watch the, oh click on the gosh. highlight videos of all these guys, it's three thirty thousands, times more. Thousands. And then some of these Rashad Pennies aren't even, there's not even a thousand people that have watched these game right. films Individual that are games, available. Which are, I wish there was more, but I right. got to watch these same six. You're but talking the about, highlight tape. You're talking about people watching the individual games on YouTube or wherever right. to study these guys as opposed versus to just, the highlight tape. Oh, look at this. Where, hi, this highlight tape is ridiculous. It's a highlight tape. Right. Everybody looks good on their highlight tape. Yeah. So you got thousands of people watching the highlight and tape look, and a couple hundred watching the actual game. This guy is a game breaker. He's somebody you got to focus on. You got you're basically all you're trying to do is limit him from busting a big play off on you. That's what you're doing when you're game planning for San Diego State. Or, yeah, it didn't work too it, well. It, it, it didn't it did work, not right, work. Right. All the time. Um, most of the time. Um, and he's he's got dynamic qualities. I just I, I, I just worry about some of it possibly translating and him being like, Maybe people he'll go to the NFL level and people will be like, oh, what's wrong with Rashad Penny? And you'd be like, oh, I don't know. Maybe he just played some mediocre talent and beat them all up. Yeah. Um, when you when you really get down to looking at things and you look at the teams that they played and the rush yards allowed, um, which isn't the end all be all. And you could it's semantics. You can get in here and, and use stats to bend whatever you want in any direction. But I'm just going to take this down down the list here. So Fresno State and Boise State. That's the 23rd and 33rd ranked um defense defense Rush and defense. rushing yards allowed those were like his worst two games of the season now some of that was game flow because boise state got up on him and you know they were trying to come back and they're not a come from behind team uh very much and fresno won that game and limited um penny to not not one of his bigger bigger days on uh, under 100 yards i believe um you get to northern illinois who ended up being 10th ranked overall in rush yards allowed and he had a pretty good game against them over 100 yards but he did have one game one one run at the end of that game that put him at that mark with and if he didn't he would have been you know in the 60 70 range probably not not nearly at the mark that he ended with so not taking anything away from him there but when you look at the rest of these teams like okay he played Stanford and Arizona State both good teams he did play Stanford on the road Stanford on the road is not the same team as Stanford is at home but they they're the 86th team in rushing yards allowed. Arizona State 79th team in rushing yards allowed. Right. Air Force 117th out of 130 qualifiers. Nevada 108th out of 130 qualifiers. San Jose State 130 out of 130 <laughs> qualifiers. Hawaii 108 out of 130 qualifiers in yards allowed. UC Davis not on the list. <laughs> right. Like. This right. is this is you not know on the list. It's just <laughs> obviously you could go through this and and you could you could break down any of these running backs that way and all. Oh, well, who did you play and where did they rank yards and all that other stuff and you know it's game flow and all that kind of stuff and game script and all that good stuff plays into that. But it's just something to kind of that that I wanted to look into just to see what was really going on in the Mountain West. And you mentioned it when we were talking about Pumphrey. Well, what about right. this Mountain West stuff? And it's like well. It's clear that the Mountain West defense isn't super great. Like mm -hmm. Pumphrey just crushed <laughs> them. San Diego State has figured out how to run the ball pretty efficiently. The boys have figured it out. And like they put back to back two thousand yard rushers out. These are Big Co alluded to it a while ago. Danelle Pumphrey. There's a, a handful of these teams that were all ranked 
in the bottom 100 of rushing yards allowed like and obviously he ran for a lot of yards and, yeah. and it was fantastic but then again when you go back and look at these multi TD games it's the same thing a lot of these teams are ranked 60th or below and some in the hundreds like we'll go back through this list again in the multi TD <laughs> and, and TDs allowed and, and the rankings for these Hawaii tied for 85th UNLV tied for 119th Air Force tied for 114th San Jose State, 130 again. <laughs> Nevada, tied for 90. New Mexico, tied for 67. UC Davis, still not ranked. Like, <laughs> just, the, you know what I'm saying here? Like, yeah. I, and I get, like, you can only play the competition in front of you. And right. I'm, I promise that I'm not, I'm not sitting here hating on, on Rashad Penny. I just want all the stuff to be brought to light. So when you make your decision, you can make your, an educated decision on your own and not just watch the highlight tape and say, oh, well, of course this guy's the top. You watch the highlight tape. He's the best back you've ever seen. Like nobody's touching him. They're crushing it. And I don't, again, he is a really good player. I just, I don't know how well he's going to translate to the NFL uh, level because you haven't seen him play against top tier talent week in, week out. Like if you put any of these guys that we ranked ahead of him or probably below him in that system at, at Mount at, in the Mountain West on San San Diego State, they're, they're going to do crush. this. They're going to do the exact same thing, probably more. Yeah, like when perhaps. you see some of these guys, like when you talk about Josh Adams, he played Miami of Ohio. I don't know what division that the conference that they're in but he had like eight carries for 105 yards and left the game in like yeah. the first quarter and a half yeah yeah like that's you, who san diego state's playing every week basically right I don't, miami of ohio uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> right but i'm that's i'm just trying to bring up a little light to the competition that he was playing and when we, we posted some stuff on youtube and somebody got us upset because they played stanford and and arizona state's not saying that they're tough competition hey they are tough comp at least they're in the pac-12 but Stanford at home is a little bit different animal. Stanford wasn't the best Stanford team that you've ever seen. And they hats off to Arizona State for taking it to Stanford this year. Arizona State, yeah, who's and nobody's ever like, oh, Arizona State, that you got to watch out for them. They're a buzzsaw. Well, they got Balage. <laughs> I mean, that's a big thing. Right. But yeah, that's about it. For sure. Like Stanford wasn't Stanford that we've been used to seeing in the last couple of years. They build a name for themselves, but it certainly wasn't Russian defense this year. No, and I mean, that, that, that's, all I'm, that's all I was trying to get at and all that all this stuff that we've said is almost like making a case not to take penny here at seven but but we're taking penny here at seven I, i'm gonna stick with him i'm gonna i'm gonna have faith in, in his abilities and what i saw on tape there's a lot of really good things to like on tape i just want to just put it in there that the the con list for me like i said i only had a couple were the fact of that he does get too cute doesn't create on his own or he does he can create it on his own he gets a little too cute while creating on his own and needs to put his shoulder down and the other one is the lack of elite competition that you saw week in week out well like you this is right we are at rb7 in the rookie rankings we're talking about potentially a tear break and we're arguing between rashad penny and josh adams for seven and eight right here but while before we get off a of penny and penny has we you know to put us a, a season on record here he's actually got put the fifth best uh, russian record of uh, russian yard season together in history but have, there's been 30 seasons over 2,000 russian yards in the ncaa before and there's eight or eight or so guys on this list that have made a name for themselves in the nfl barry sanders melvin gordon marcus allen reggie bush reggie bush is not even on this list he was doing a lot of that with the uh receiving so Marcus Allen, obviously, we just talked about a couple of uh, Hall of Famers. Melvin Gordon's been good. Um, Derrick Henry's on this list. He's con trying to be 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 something. Ladanian Tomlinson, all, all, obviously, Tony Dorsett, Pumphrey's on this list. Matt Forte, Ricky Williams, but that's just a couple. And then you got your uh, you got your Mike Rozier. Who's that? You got your Troy Davis. You got your Andre Williams. That didn't work out too good. You got your Kevin Smith. That didn't work out too good. You got your Bryce Love's coming around from Stanford. He's on this list. Ron Dane. That didn't do so hot. Dante Foreman just did Don, it. Donald, Donald Brown. That didn't work out so good. Rashawn Salam. R.I.P. Damian Anderson. Who's that? <laughs> Charles White. Who's that? Tevin Coleman's on this list. That's cool. But you know what I'm saying? Like there's Christian McCaffrey's in the league. He put it together in Stanford. But over 2,000 rushing yards, Troy Davis, Byron Hansford. Who's that? You know, so there's, <laughs> like there's not it's, right. These Even are, though it's an elite list, this is an elite. This this elite company here, but there's only ten guys all out of thirty. You know, two two or three of them are continue or you know on this list and playing. Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, Tevin Coleman. These are good good looking guys in the NFL right now, but there's only like eight of them out of let's say twenty five of them that aren't on this list that aren't already in the, that aren't still in the league. That were there's eight of there's eight Hall of Famers on this list. 
And so that leaves about 17 people that you never heard of. So, Rashad, we got Penny, who's put together an absolutely monstrous season here, playing against people that don't really tackle well. And we'll see what happens. I'm just, you know, the chances. He's he's got a the the people. He's on the list here with some really good guys, but he's on some. Uh, there's two two to one people didn't make it. Just want to give a shout out to that fullback uh, Bodden. He deserves a ton of credit for these numbers that Rashad Penny put up because he was out there laying wood like every big Rashad Penny play. You can find that fullback number fifteen putting somebody down, <laughs> like paving the way. Yeah. Give my boy Bot in a shout out. I had oh, to get it in well, there. Well, maybe, solid, maybe solid Rashad out. Penny put has a bust and puts a gold jacket on one day and he gives his fullback in college a shout out. Yeah. Got to. <laughs> he should. <laughs> Got to. The, an- another nice plus for, for Penny is the kick returns. He absolutely lit it up on kick returns. So you got to love that. The, the special teams, though, like I watched the coach break <laughs> down like the special, the, one of the return touchdowns that he had and he was like showing you how they were like fake blocking one way and then everybody just switched yeah. in reverse field He's, and like they are in sync like this team is good to go they're one of the best teams in this division oh yeah you can't well say they're coached. not well coached better come out of your well mouth coached. With, with those types of uh those types of stats and out of the running back and position in, for the past past five years in those kickoffs his running style kind of comes out and you know that patience that you see like he's he's got good patience he he when he takes his runs he'll suck really hard up into that line and and kind of figure out which line he wants to take and and hit that hole just sometimes i would like it if you hit the hole with your shoulder down yeah and (laughs) i think i think i think he's got the size and speed combo to become something special i think that he's probably going to get an opportunity because he can pass he he can pass catch the pass protection i don't know if it's quite where it needs to be but i mean we've talked about it before like what there's who's not is? a ton of college backs that right. are like, oh my God, that pass protection. <laughs> I just, I guess you know, you whose take... pass protection is probably good? Bodden. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I guess you, I, we could take, we could take Penny here at seven, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm not excited, as excited or as giddy as nearly everybody else is out there because I've watched more than just the highlight tape and there are some concerns and it's not a sure thing here by any means. And any of the freaking next five dudes we talk about or four guys we talk about, landing spot dependent i could like i really don't want to make a call almost on any of these dudes until yeah. i see where their landing spot is but where's the fun in that yeah um, it's, it's real close for me too right now like i said to lead this thing off the 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 tipping point for me is i do think that there'll be a little bit more versatility in penny right off the rip depending you know mostly obviously landing spot would you as you just said but He'll he'll be he'll get a, he'll get a chance at being like a third down roll back regardless of what he is and I don't know if Josh Allen if he goes to a team who already Adams. has a running back Josh Adams sorry will get that chance to be the third down guy I think he might get pegged as a as a first and second down guy and it's it's easier for Penny to get you production on your fantasy point or on your fantasy team right out of the gate if he's with out the style of player that he is and he doesn't necessarily need to be the bulldozer to be the third down guy right off the rip I get it I'm with you. I uh, I guess I'm in agreement. I don't really want to, but I'll reluctantly put Penny in the it's seventh spot. It's reluctant for me too. I don't. I, yeah, I just read you a whole bunch of cons. Yeah, we went off on the cons. We spent half of a <laughs> podcast talking about cons. Um, so we've we've gone way too long here on uh, Rashad Penny per use here at Married to the Game. Let's uh, let's get our composure. Let's let this beat drop. We'll go to break. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. All right, welcome back to Married to the Game. Hit us up on Twitter if you feel so inclined, at the FF Dynasty. We're going to keep going with these running back rankings. We we're at number eight now. We kind of alluded to it last segment. It's no surprise. I'm going Josh Adams. It's Josh Adams. I'm, I'm all about some Josh Adams. I was ready to pump and come in here and try and defend him against Penny and, and put him at seven and and fight you on it real hard. Um, man, and then I read like that NFL draft profile breakdown and they just sh- shit all over him and like, he's a <laughs> sixth seventh round pick at best and who josh adams yeah how he's got like some awesome qualities but he also like sucks and i was just like those, I don't, guys, I don't, those guys know everything i don't think that's the case lance zerloin i don't know that that's <laughs> everyone that gets you... mad at lance around this time of the year yeah well we beat him to it this year we, we, we we've been coming out with all this stuff before they could even get anything up on uh on the nfl.coms but they're up there now um i don't know i Part of me still wants to take Josh Adams over Rashad Penny. I just, I'm, I think he's better at creating on his own. I, I think he's got better short area quickness than Penny. What do you Negative. think? You disagree with that? Yeah, shot it down. It's because what you you thinking of the times when he was he wasn't playing healthy? 
maybe. I mean, I'm thinking of the times that I have as much tape as I could have watched on them, and I've watched a decent amount of Notre Dame games because they're on a lot. Um, I I don't think that that's one of his strong suits. I don't think that his lateral quickness is is super great. Um, I think, but he's but I'm okay. To, I'm okay to forgive that because well, the like, lateral. I'll give you that. The lateral quickness isn't necessarily the best, but he he gets north and south super right. fast. But that's not creating on your own. Creating on your own is like when you get over to the outside and you're one-on-one with somebody or you need to juke somebody out of your shorts. The fact that you're running somebody over doesn't mean that you're really... Well, he can, he can still, your still sidestep you, but he's not going to He's not gonna uh, get the edge. He, he's not like running to the sideline. He's not He's not the fastest, but I mean, he'll exhibit some patience on like a stretch run and he'll plant his foot and he'll accelerate north and south or north very fast like i like that's that short area burst that's what i'm talking about like getting from zero to 60 i feel like he when he's healthy he's just as good if not better than rashad penny and the the long speed i feel like is right there i think he he was clocked at 22 something miles an hour versus nc state i think he's got pretty good some pretty good long speed i think the burst isn't isn't quite as good as 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 maybe penny's is I, i i don't i don't think the short area quickness or uh or burst is as good as as you're saying it is. I would and maybe disagree it was better his little. freshman year when he was like super healthy and and he's dealt with a, a decent amount of injuries and and he tore his ACL, but he he played well through the injuries that he sustained, yeah. which I think speaks no, a lot think, to him. I think that's fantastic. You're playing you're playing through a a good bit of injuries that could easily sideline anybody, and you could use it as an excuse. But he he played well and at, at times was averaging nine yards a carry and was in the Heisman. Uh, talks there for a while and was just absolutely blowing the doors off week after week, just huge run after huge run, game breaking runs. Um, I I think that, you know, I'm okay with him not having the greatest burst maybe and the greatest short area quickness or lateral agility um, because he is, is the no nonsense runner that will get North and South and plant his foot one time and get up the field, which is kind of, you know, what I like about him. Um, I do think that's kind of why I, I like him going into the NFL. And I, I think that's a good mold for an NFL running back to be able to just kind of go ahead and, and get what's there and, and be able to get extra because there is good burst and good speed. But I just don't think the burst is, is great. Like, I don't think it's something that you're like, wow, look at that burst from that huge man. And that was like the biggest knock they had on him on that, that draft profile that I read from NFL.com was that he has no short area quickness whatsoever. And I'm like, I think, I think you're underrating him here a little bit. When he goes to make his moves, he does have to gear down a little bit and he doesn't get back up to speed as fast as I would like him to. But when he does just plant, when he decides to just plant the foot and get up field, that that's when I'm interested in what Josh Adams is bringing to the table. Well, I'd like to interject that. I believe when Josh Adams truck sticks somebody, I could, Clock, you know, click that under the uh, column of creating on creating your own. on his own. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think if you knock Thank somebody, you, on, I think if you knock somebody on their back and you keep it moving, you could just call that creating on your own. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I would just sure, yeah. sure. But just by lateral quickness, in you the, could just create it on your own through that. In the, yeah, in yeah. the other the fork ca- in the road, I went straight. Him. You didn't juke in the him, other you bullet just points. Down. In the other bullet points yeah. of creating on your own, are juking, yeah, and jiving. Dude down. had five and a half yards after contact, right? Which so is that's why creating I'm, which on is your why own. I'm, no, <laughs> and this is like real yards after contact. This isn't like against like tacklers, skewed long runs, which he did have. He did have like six runs over sixty yards, which is why I'm into him. He's got a ton of yards after contact. He, I think he runs very physically. I think he fit will fit the mold if he goes to the right situation i feel like he'll fit fit the mold in, in a nice pounder and i think he exhibits at time if you go back to 2016 you saw him catching some balls in this lsu game at the end of the season you saw him catching a couple balls there um one you know caught caught some in stride didn't didn't have to break stride caught some kind of contested out in the flats there with with guys in his face and made made did create on his own and make that guy miss the, um, the hands in regards to the hands like they're there weren't too many receptions to be seen. Most of them were handsy. Um, I think he's pretty quick to turn up field. There were some pretty painful concentration drops that you saw. There's a big one in 16 at the end of the Virginia Tech game where it's fourth down and they throw it to him and he's open to get the first and there's time running out and they're down and it's a it's a bad drop, bad look for him. Yeah, But, but he, he did have 21 receptions in his sophomore yeah. year, so that's something. That's something. With Kaiser in 16, he they threw it to him a, a, a little bit more and you know he caught caught some caught some good balls in that year and I think you know like I said the last game of the season in the LSU game it was rainy nasty sloppy game he was kind of struggling to get they really 
they were struggling to get anything rolling on offense. Um, I thought he had a, the, even though the stat sheet doesn't say he had a good game, he had a lot of good kind of grinded out, powerful runs, dragging dudes down the field against a tough LSU team that you know that they were keen on stopping this run because that's what, you know, old Kelly wanted wants to do and is known for doing. They're going to, especially in the slop, like you're sure. going to, you know, pounded down their throat and I, I thought there were some really nice runs that you saw from him just carrying a, a bunch of defenders making one cut getting up the field getting three or four yards or, or even you know seven to ten yards right. on those carries no, absolutely. There wasn't a lot there. he's a he's a banger in the strongest sense of the word he looks the part of a true NFL running back he drags defenders and he pushes piles like he's a pile pusher um he he always seems to find a way to dive or spin forward for a couple extra yards. I just, I like, he just plays so much more aggressive than a Rashad Penny. I just, I really like that style. Like, is it, is it bad to have stiff hips? Is Are, are stiff hips a super bad quality? Because there's times when it, they look pretty stiff, but I then mean, there's times people, when he looks like he's got some wiggle. People don't like the stiff hips, but there's been plenty of running backs who have been called stiff-hipped and have done <laughs> just fine in the hipped. NFL. Right. Stiff-hipped. I mean, if, he runs upright, but he's if, tall. If you're good, you're good. I do. I don't like the fact that he's got these little bird-looking legs when he's out there. They, they look, I think the legs <laughs> look fine. <laughs> they look like little. I think it is because he's so tall and he's got a lot of leg. But it, they don't. They don't. They're not. They're not big legs. They're, got a lot of legs. They're leg. little. They look like they could be introvert if if or uh, inverted if bow-legged. <laughs> so yeah, bow-legged chick. <laughs> nah, man. I, part of me wanted to hate on him for his 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 stiff hips, but then I mean. Looking at like the USC game, he was putting some jukes on some dudes, and he was showing some hip swivel, as they say. Yeah. Um, I don't. And again, he was he fought through a lot of injuries in this in this season, and it's and, a, it's and a great well offensive line. True, they got a first they round a, left tackle coming out, and and a, and a left guard. That left side of that line was was fantastic. Um, so well, let's take it to a little sound clip here. I got a little a little sound clip of what it's like to get inside the mind of Josh Adams. I would, like Notre Dame's got a ton of money behind their media program. They pump out some awesome uh, media and hype type videos. You watch this video, you're ready to like draft Josh Adams. But let's let's take it inside the mind of Josh Adams. If you could basically slow him down as he's diagnosing a play, this was pretty impressive. Let me play it for you. But if you could slow me down, if you could slow me down, what would it sound like? Sound. Free snap read. Scan the field. Locate the free safety. Don't give away tendencies. Inside zone. Inside zone. Two power shuffles. Downhill. Read the backside A to B. Get inside out. Scrape paint. Scrape paint. Scrape paint. Scrape paint. Attack the defender. Hips low. Explode. Explode. Tense. Tense. Hit to destroy. Stop and go. Stutter step. Limp shoulder. Stiff in the Stiff. Lift. Run. Run. Fast. Faster. Power. Cut. Quick. Turn on the speed. Turn on the speed. Confidence. Confidence. For God, for my family, for my family, y'all my family, y'all my for my team, my brothers. If there's an award for that, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's what it would sound like. If you could slow if me down, you could slow me down. After every time he scores, he throws up the two one five. Philly boy. Yeah, I mean, let the beat drop. I'm sure that there, there. I feel like it's, it's he's one of these people that's people are pretty 50 50 on you either love him or you hate him. Um, there's there's certainly some knocks that you can say about him. I, I personally love him. I like I like his game. I like what he does. I, I thought you probably didn't see the healthiest of guys in 2017 and he's still crushed. Um, he's also well regarded by his team for his humility and his work ethic. You got to love that. I mean, this dude. I think. I think he's. Even though there's a there's a, a good offensive line in front of him, I think he's a, a pretty smart player, and he knows what to do when stuff's there. Um, you, you, you opening run against NC State, you see the offensive line blocking really well for him. The the D lot the DN takes kind of a hard angle at him. Left tackle kind of lets him in on the penetration, but but seals him a little bit, and it's a little bit of a of a of a read option. And there's a there's a free linebacker coming off that same end that that they just let the left tackle in on, and at that mesh point there where him and uh um what's the quarterback's name Winbush, yeah they're they're having that exchange and they're using the read option off that free that free linebacker that's coming in and they 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 use it to slow that linebacker and, and make him think for a second, um but he's coming in on the on a on a free on a free hit there, and as I said that that left tackle had let the D end in, um and he. 
he kind of takes that step right into the penetration where he let that D end in, and uh, that allows a little bit better of space and angle for him to then bounce it around where that DN was coming from. And it got that linebacker a little deeper into the backfield and allowed him to kind of get that edge a little better. And I just thought that was a, obviously it was a really well blocked play, but it was also a smart play and, and, and good intuition by Josh Adams on what to do right there. I mean, obviously the read option, you know, kind of led into fr- freezing that linebacker a little bit because Wimbush is a, is a threat to run the ball. Um, but I, I thought that was a nice, you know, play to kind of to me it clicked like oh that I thought that was a really good he kind of leaned into where the the penetration already was and there was a defender and then got that free defender sucked in a little further and then yep. took a shot and busted a nice runoff to start the game so so you're saying you like the vision he's well not- no I'm, I'm just saying because there is a good offensive line there and there is good blocking but you still have to make a smart heady play and know what to do in that situation to to get the run well he's right. not wearing contacts I, I like the vision he's solid vision. <laughs> sure sure um I'm I just I love I love this dude, man. I think he's he's got that one cut downhill kind of style, and I think it's going to translate to the NFL. And I don't really care where he goes. I think he can yeah. go wherever. And I think that he's a little bit underrated in the passing game, and maybe he won't get his opportunity there, and maybe he doesn't score as many fantasy points as Penny, and maybe that's why you should take him at Penny at seven over Rashad or over uh, Josh Adams at eight. But but I want I want Adams at eight for sure. We've said it multiple times that I I believe a lot of these running backs can catch the ball. Like, as, as, although Penny in the stat sheet has more and shows a little bit more versatility in that in that uh, passing game kind of repertoire there, mm-hmm. uh, Adams can certainly hold his own just fine. It may just not be as as uh, perceived that way, um, and there's not a, a a good amount of stats to really back it up. Uh, the other thing, I well, one more thing that I like about Adams, man, is we we mentioned it on the podcast when we talked about him. But even when he's not getting the ball and there's a quarterback run or something else, he's downfield laying wood. He is hammering somebody downfield, and it's just he's a team guy, just like you said. I, I, I he love puts all that team kind first, of stuff. Yeah. So well, that's would- going to get you opportunity, and just the effort alone will get you opportunity. But you say that, that he doesn't have this the catches on his on his record to to stack up against Rashad Penny. Last year in Penny's breakout year, he had 19 catches. And last year, um, Adams only had 13. But the year before, he had 20. Adams had 21. So Adams has more catches in one year, single year than Penny does on his record as, as any anyway. So like you said, there's people are picking and choosing who can catch the ball in this right. draft class. And it's not fair to the guys that they say can't catch. Not that anybody cares what draft Twitter says about these guys at all. But, you know, just you might have seen a couple of things happen in space where it looks like Penny's a better pass catcher, but Penny caught no more passes in college than, than Josh Adams did. Well, he, the total number of catches is, is a good bit more, I think. But Yeah, I think it's in the 50s versus the 30s. But, but I mean, still, when you, when you look at Penny's game... I mean, Penny didn't have a ton. It's no. not like you can just be like, look at all his production. I mean, it was a solid amount. No, but he but looks comfortable and smooth in he the does. passing game. So. And, and I think Josh Adams does. He Maybe not as could. much. But Good. there's some downfield catching, and there's some in-stride catching and handsies. Sure. There's also some concentration drops and all that, that comes with it. But 19, I'm, 15, that's uh, 34, and 8 is 42 mm-hmm. versus 13 and 21. That's 34, and 7 is 41, 42. I mean, within a catch. There's like some, some career button you could click that would give you these numbers <laughs> quick i mean i got quick math in my head i got him within a catch a piece so just don't give me that josh adams can catch just as good as penny i don't i don't know if that's <laughs> you, again, you heard it here first we're guys. getting a one-star review on that one here. yeah again i don't know if that's the fact but it's certainly <laughs> not the per- it's certainly not the perceived value of josh adams and and penny and, and, and the, you know what big ca- pass catching department yeah well you know that's just like uh <laughs> Your opinion, man. <laughs> well, my opinion is is that the stats that Penny has for catches is within one catch of Josh Adams. That's not my opinion. That's the numbers. The numbers don't lie. I will say this about Penny. He's a smart kid, man. The dude is real good at math. I watched like this video where they were interviewing him before he came out of high school, and he they asked him about his stats, and he like rattled off every single number that he had, and it wasn't like he had memorized them. Like he was just regurgitating him off offhand like dude's good at math there's another video where he admitted to like being good at math like if you're good at math you got a good memory you're a smart kid i think that's that's definitely a positive take into here him going into the nfl just wanted to add that in we, we didn't mention i didn't mention it yet thought of it anyways decent chance at a wonderlick score let's let this breathe 
Let's go to break. We just gave you seven and eight. A little bit of a tear break. We'll come back. We'll figure out who to put at nine. I have a feeling it's going to be John Kelly. Well, let's go to break. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. If you'd like to join the discussion, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We're going to keep moving with the rookie running back rankings. We just gave you number seven and number eight. We went uh, Rashad Penny at, at seven. Me personally, I'll take him as seven there, I guess, based off name cachet alone. Um, we also think there's probably a little bit better of an opportunity for him to get on the field as like a third down type of back. Um, with the receiving ability, even though the the catches aren't that far off from from Josh Adams, who we had at eight, it's probably a better. He's he's still a better receiver overall. We went we went Penny at seven. We went Josh Adams at eight. Let's get into number nine here. We haven't broken him down yet here on Married to the Game. It's a guy we're both we're everyone I think is pretty excited about. What do you got over there, Casey? Let's get into some John Kelly. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a guy who will basically punch you in the face off the on the field yeah and then off the field he's just all smiles all day long and he skateboards <laughs> is that is that i mean is that something extra for you you, you got a heart you that's got pretty a much my breakdown for... of of kelly that's not a terrible breakdown especially with, I mean, if you're skateboarding <laughs> but skateboard snowboard anything like that just the, right up casey's alley the interviews and all that kind of stuff and people you know, just pictures and all that. He's just always smiling, just seems to be a pretty, pretty vibrant guy. But then when he, it's just a totally different story when he gets on the field. Yeah. I mean, when you watch him, I watched the interview after the Georgia Tech game uh, in 17, which is like the first game of their season. Yeah. He came out and, and just crushed it for his team that game, scored four yeah. touchdowns. They were trailing a lot of that game. He scored the touchdown to, to, to send it to overtime. He scored like two more touchdowns in overtime, yeah. one to tie it up, one to win the game. Um, and, and after the game, he yeah, you're right, smile from ear to ear. But it wasn't like, oh, my gosh, look what I just did. He was he was really trying to talk about the team and what it meant for the program and, and everything moving forward and giving credit to everyone else. Um, and he wasn't trying to make it about himself, but you could tell, you know, he was genuinely excited. It, it, it was a good interview, and you can watch some more stuff on him. Um, Tennessee does a pretty good job there with their media program, too. They take yeah. you kind of into the mind of – John Kelly, and he goes into this off-the-field stuff, and it's all very appealing and, and all that. But, I mean, that's just kind of a bonus for us here. Yeah, we're not going to miss a good interview. No, we're not. <laughs> but that's not only – that's not it. That we don't like, That yeah. was kind of the, one of the first things we mentioned. But that really – that's like one of the last things I look at, and it's just kind of a bonus. Sure. But when you watch this dude's play on the field, well, I mean – real quick, while we're talking about the character, he did get himself in a little bit of off-the-field trouble. He got – he had a, a marijuana uh, misdemeanor where he was pulled over because he had a dang headlight out mm. so well, maybe that's why getting, it's all smiles you can't you know <laughs> yeah, he's relaxed been known man. to make you smile listen every nfl team it's been it's a fact you gotta draft a weed guy <laughs> you have one you draft, on your the, roster? you draft the weed guy usually pays off for you right right <laughs> little weed ain't never hurt nobody anyway <laughs> especially in college yeah, they should prescribe that for pain versus pain medication. But that's a different discussion. Anyways, he was Especially suspended. He was suspended for a game uh, versus Kentucky. They lost that game. Shocking. <laughs> uh, anyway, that is definitely a red flag-ish, a red-ish flag. Um, but, I mean, to watch this dude on the field, he's basically... 100 miles an hour switching lanes like whoa. Like, everything this dude does is... Like whoa. Like he puts that shoulder down with mean intentions. Like, whoa. Oh, and he's about sure. to run you over. Like some of these dudes need counseling after what they just got done to them. <laughs> well, you gotta, like, whoa. you gotta play that first one again. You gotta give me that twice. Hundred miles an hour switching lanes. Like, whoa. Hundred miles an hour switching lanes. <laughs> like, whoa. Like, whoa. We're definitely. This one's gonna get cited on the uh, YouTube. We're not gonna be able to monetize this one. They're gonna be like copyrighted <laughs> music. Like whoa, mm -hmm. there there is a bit of weight discrepancy when you look around on this guy. Yeah, so I'm sick of these weights. Can somebody just weigh this guy? <laughs> <laughs> just call it a wrap because like if we, I've seen him listed at six one two hundred, six foot two ten, and five then I nine two oh five over here. And then I saw him at one eighty eight from the from the uh, senior bowl. So I I don't know what to think. We can't know anything until we get to the combine about anyone like literally there's nothing you could actually know before the combine i mean the combine <laughs> is literally everything is kelly not a junior was he are you sure no he came junior? out early he's a junior he was that, yeah how was he at the senior bowl though oh true well what am i thinking about 
So mm-hmm. Maybe some other. Maybe Akram Wadley is definitely waiting. Oh yeah, at he waited in at one eighty eight for sure. Someone made sure to bowl. tell us that. So I guess he wasn't on the Senior Bowl wait. So okay, so we got two hundred five, two ten, two hundred. Good catch. Hopefully somewhere more towards well, yeah, the two ten range. Yeah, the two ten, two twelve range is kind of. I saw that. I I choose to go with that one because I want him to be. Oh, 210, I want 212. him to be bigger. If he's 205, you want that BMI up. Huh? I actually really don't care that much if he's 205. The way he runs and what he does, he's got plenty of power in his game that'll nasty running easily style. translate to the NFL. It's not like he's not. It's not a Fugazi. It's oh. it's the real deal. Fugazi. He's a Fugazi. Um, but, but my couple of things that I have on him is the balance. Leg drive is top notch. The stiff arms mean. Got a great pad level. Yo, outstanding bounce. Stays on his feet Always. is what you hear from yeah. the uh, per, uh, com- commentators. Like keeps his balance, kept his balance, and kept it moving. For Stays sure. on his feet. Those are the things you hear. You don't see. You don't hear tripped up. And, from and this then, dude. then the, the other things <laughs> you, you don't hear tripped. The up. other things you hear are just the clacking of him just smashing somebody's pads. <laughs> Clickety clack. He's always. He's got a great forward lean. Every time he goes Yo, down, it's this three, dude four is more yards. Sprite and codeine with a Jolly Rancher. Man, his pad level <laughs> is on some crazy <laughs> lean. Got some lean. On got that some lean. lean. Um, I, just, got, I just broke his stride there. I had sure. to get that lean That's in. It's all though. good. He's he's <laughs> got he's got shorter steps. Make for like a nice quick strong cut. I like that. Um, a quick track <laughs> <the tail. laughs> what was that? <laughs> he so uses. His, I think he uses his, his different gears really well to set up defenders and and he kind you know he'll he'll kind of play you on how fast he is or how fast he's going and then he'll slow it down or speed it up to set up a block or, or to set his defender up and get a better angle or better space and then just blow through that with with really solid bursts. The top end speed isn't phenomenal, but it's, it's yo it's okay. He was he was a. Uh, he was tracked at 21.7 no, miles per I hour. I don't think that was real. It was on the TV screen. Yeah. <laughs> had to be real. It literally That's showed fast. the little graphic where the point, you know, yeah, whatever was going I up. I think that was somebody's made up perception of measuring. <laughs> yeah. 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 It looks about 21.7. Because <laughs> MPGs <laughs> made that up. No, that, I mean, I just did see people doing that. All I the- do think that was a little bit of an anomaly. He doesn't quite look that freaking right. fast. Um, but he does look pretty quick. But I he's mean, got plenty of burst and speed to to get past guys and and then when he does uh make he he can certainly make you miss and create all on his own um but if he chooses to go through you he probably will win that battle i mean and just finishes the run strong solid pass catching good and pass pro well it really checks all the boxes really if you want to get down to it you could ser- i i think that you could make there's obviously not a lot of tape and stuff to look at and he didn't get a ton of run um but if you wanted to be like, I'm taking him over Penny and Josh Adams, I couldn't be that upset if with you. If I had you, the really. meatloaf clip that was like, you took the words right out of my mouth, that's what I'd play right here. <laughs> Love it. I don't have it yet. It's going to come on the board. I got to get that locked up. But you're exactly right, man. Like, depending on where this dude lands, I could be all over him. Like, I want to take him. I wanted to come He's in here and be like, John Kelly at seven. Legitimately checks all the boxes for me. Sure. Well, that's my favorite part about him is the first half of the season, first two thirds of the season, his consistency in the box score is not not you know obviously in college especially the box scores can be so deceiving but the consistency on the the attempts he's basically carrying the carrying the rock 20 times a game and his averages are great but what i love is that like the longs are only like 27 and 38 so it's not like he's getting all those yards on a 90 yard run or something which is not it's not a bad thing to go 90 yards but i do like can, a good long run uh, everybody loves a good long run but if that <laughs> if, if you're if you're it's not how the, long it is it's long, how you use it right right the long runs can skew things <laughs> but the consistent pass catching repertoire to break out the year for this guy is awesome and then every, it kind of tailed off a little bit after bama but everybody plays a little slower and not as not a, everybody's healthy after playing bama but the first two-thirds of the season and just running and receiving i mean just a, the definition of a dual threat well i think i think looking at the box scores though he doesn't have as much production as these other two guys that we just talked about no. and that's like the main thing that kind of separates him is that he hasn't he hasn't put it down on tape for multiple years he had basically a beginning to this la- an end to 16 and a beginning to 17 that were phenomenal and awesome to watch and then that Tennessee team just freaking fell off the rails well do we have to talk about the elephant in the room here in this huge gleaming light that blinds you like a Tennessee running back that didn't get a lot of run but oh, catches it I mean and he was behind that dude so that's, that's part of why well he wasn't. that's the thing is it's like you you we've already you, 
it's Alvin Kamara is like, yeah, take the words right. out of Casey's mouth last week with the grunting. It's like, you know, where do you go from here? But a Tennessee running back that can do both run and catch that didn't get a lot of run. We just saw this movie. If it would be even if he came out and was three quarters of what Alvin Kamara did, that would right. be uh, amazing. But well, the the whole Kamara thing was that he was this pass catcher and elusive in space and all that stuff is is you know why initially he was interesting to people and we liked him a lot last year. But you know people didn't love his between the tackle running, which I actually didn't. I thought it was better than most people. But this kid's between the tackle running is definitely better than Kamara's was on tape. Right. When you just look at it and, and all the all the you know boxes that he checks in that portion and then his receiving abilities is pretty solid yeah well before i even mention the receiving ability i mean just just the running ability he doesn't he doesn't shy away from contact and may, maybe at the next level he, he will maybe a little bit because like i mean i love the attitude and not shying away from it but like sometimes i do think he unnecessarily seeked out con- contact especially in the second level when he probably could have juked his way out, out of some of that but he just wanted to kind of make a point but i like, i'm not going to try and knock him for that because i do like that attitude and like he he turns a small loss into a small gain oh and I he saw turns a, a short gain into five yards i like, saw a stat that said that he didn't lose a single yard from scrimmage all year like he never that's had crazy. a negative run he's that the definition impressive. he's the definition of legs churning i don't I know if that was that through stat, the full season but, but i saw an interview with the butch jones and and some guy who was talking to him and i don't know if it was all the way through the season or what it was but at some point in the season he hadn't lost a scrimmage right. yard like he had at least gotten zero yards on the on every carry. That's that's pretty Just cool. To your, that's pretty to cool. your point right yeah. there. I've never seen that kind of stat before for a running back. So I'm it, kind of speechless at this moment. He he doesn't as 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 shifty as his feet are and as quick as his feet are. He doesn't dance. If he cuts it outside, it's pretty much a last resort. But he can get to the edge. I'm almost surprised that he didn't try to bust it outside more often than he did because he could. Um, but he just he seems to want to press it up field. And, you know, he can he can slow himself down to get you off balance. He can show you a little patience, a little hesitation, and he can get around you. He can split you. He can spin move, jump cut. There's just so many ways that this guy can beat you. And I have probably more faith in him to beat a guy one-on-one than I do Penny or Adams. I think I'm I think if you got to put me in a one-on-one position, let me get Josh John Kelly out there. Yeah, I mean I, I'm I can't really disagree with you too hard. Yeah, uh, like I said, I mean, there's a definitely a case to be made that you could take him over both of those guys and slot him right at seven. Right, um, and you're just a little, like you said, a little scared of the lack of overall production that you see from him and the consistency production. of sustained production. Exactly. So. But then you guys already brought it up the receiving game. I think he's very smooth. He had 37 receptions in 2017 alone. Which again. I, the, another reason why I can't, if you want to throw him up there because of the pass catching ability alone, mm-hmm. just like we talked about with Penny, maybe being a little bit more third downish off the rip, but this guy definitely could be a, every down back. I think, well, I think the hands, many, that's as many catches as Penny had in his career right there. Just year. about, just about four less uh, or five less. Um, I think the hands look strong. He makes he makes catches outside of his body. You see him reach back behind him. Yeah. You, you see him not break that stride. Like I've, I've said about other guys, all these dudes can pretty much pass catch um i don't i don't think i really saw him lining up out wide anywhere but i did really love the routes that he was running out of the backfield i think he's another one of these guys like like we're going to get to another tier with wadley and justin jackson but i think he and he plays like them in a sense where he has that awareness to be able to break away from the line of scrimmage and become an outlet for his quarterback when he was supposed to be pass protecting but i mean there's a there's a there's a split second when you realize there's no money for me to pass protect and you can see like the Kellen Bellages who who don't have that awareness to break away. They're just still just kind of who should I who should I block? Who should I block? And they're not they don't right. they don't realize when it's time to cut cut that and get out and be an outlet. And, and he he has that. Um, and I think he's lethal in the open open field. I think he sets up a screen pass really well. He's good at just kind of giving the defender a little shoulder, like he's gonna fake block it, and then he squeezes out very soon. He probably learned a lot of that from Kamara. Um, they're both very similar in that in that standpoint. I think that uh, he's pretty good in pass protection. I did see him whiff a couple times, and one time he got blown up, but he still gave a second effort and gave his quarterback enough time to get rid of the ball. For the most part, he's out there laying wood. I like him yeah. in that regard. 
I just I really like everything there is about John Kelly, and I'm super excited to draft him more so almost than I am the two dudes that I just said I would take ahead of him. Looks like you got a little bit of a problem. Looks like we all got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but so, we got to come on here and make a call because people want to hear well, these rankings. I, I, I'm, and I'm okay with the call that I have right now. And just like we said, I, I, I'm, I'm okay if you want to put him at, at seven. That's fine with me. And I, I'm not going to argue with you too much. And obviously, we're landing spot, landing spot, landing spot. I'll just say it three times in a row so we yeah. can get a couple of them out there. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it, this guy could land in somewhere awesome. And this, maybe I want him over carry on Johnson. You know, I who knows? Woo, over johnson i'm just 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 making a point yeah just no, i got point. you all right well i think that's uh i think that's long enough on john kelly we like him in number nine here we're definitely excited to take him let's go to break we'll be back for your pleasure it comes down to with these next two guys is are you taking the safety which i think i think royce is pretty safe like he's he's got career stats to back everything up he's a, he's a pretty solid rusher um he's got a big frame he's got a decent amount of career catches and looks decent catching 79 the ball. baby that's a lot of catches um and 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 can do a little do a little bit of everything for your team there's no crazy long speed or like crazy elite burst or anything but he runs out lines. he outruns some dudes sometimes he, he certainly does he's I underrated think, with his speed yeah but at the, at the nfl level it'll be apparent that he's not as fast as a lot of these other guys fair um, <laughs> fair enough <laughs> and I, I think he still can do work in, in a 20 30 yard range in, in the NFL and I, I think he is pretty a pretty safe player I think he can go right in somewhere and and be pretty efficient with what's going on and then Balaj is to me is like just a ginormous ceiling home run cut so kind of whichever way you're feeling right there at that point in the draft obviously again before we're talking about the real NFL draft and we see how that unfolds if we're talking right now, like the the ceiling and the upside for Balaj and the home run cut ability might make me lean a little bit towards Balaj at the current second, just because for sure. Obviously, you can see the receiving game, which everyone's drooling over, and that he's a physical <sighs> specimen and oh, that yeah. he's real fast and all this other stuff. Well, he's born with night matchup nightmare ability. Yeah, I think I said that I think last he did time. Say we that. Talked I like, about that's him. a good line. What like we do? I, we say don't mess it up often, but if we're at RB ten here, this is where you swing for the fences. Like Royce's career catches and all that good stuff, and you you know, like you said, if he works in a twenty or thirty yard box in NFL, Matt Forte made a living doing that, and I could live with that. That's no problem. But with everything, even coming out of the Senior Bowl, Kalen Balaj, even you know the wide receiver chops, nobody could even. There, it was a matchup nightmare. Yada yada yada. This is where you switch switch it and go from safety to home run cut. For sure. me, I mean, I, that's my personality. At the top, I'll go with you know the the chalk is the safer, but. Down here at RB ten, I I would I would go with Kalen and just hope that I hit a home run. Yeah, I mean, it just when we talk, we broke down Kalen Balaj and we just we my big takeaway from it is that at Arizona State there was a thunder and a lightning, and he shouldn't have been the thunder, and he shouldn't have been the light. Yeah. No, yeah, you're like in what world is he the lightning? Right. And what, you bugged me out with that. He's one. he's the you know Richards was in what the world thunder. is he not the thunder? He should be the thunder. He should be the thunder and the lightning. He should <laughs> right. be the the whole package. Yeah, right. But he was the lightning in this. Yeah, in this I think you were like in what world? Bizarro <laughs> world that Arizona State lives in. Apparently, yeah, what world is a two hundred thirty pound man the lightning? Right. And you just wish that there was a little bit more uh, testicular fortitude behind his <laughs> running style. <laughs> testicular fortitude. Oh, that's a new one. That was a mankind favorite back in the day in wrestling. <laughs> I thought it was mankind. <laughs> mankind. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Um, that's or, a or maybe, Cactus Jack. Or maybe it was Cactus Jack. One of those Cactus two. Cactus Jack, little testicular fortitude. Uh, Socko came out. That was it. He'd he jump was, off three uh, <laughs> three levels. Not a big deal. Oh, he was, Mick Foley was a wild dude. <laughs> he was so wild. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking around. <laughs> feels so good when he jokes anything to get you guys to stop talking about wrestling <laughs> <laughs> throw a sound clip in there go, Way to go Jay Wayne. that's fair enough um no i'm on i'm on board Socko. i think <laughs> i think i'll take Kalen balaj at 10 i think you gotta i think you gotta take this home run cut dude started off his career as an edge rusher which i think is kind of intriguing um he spent his sophomore season season playing on both sides of the ball really like that from a from a, i know how to play football kind of standpoint um, I think his best attribute is his athletic size and speed. I think he's got pretty long speed, pretty decent long speed. It's about as good as Penny's, right? 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think he's supposed to be faster than Penny. He is um, faster than Penny. But I definitely like his receiving ability more than Penny. Oh, for sure. Um, that, and that's what you're shoot right now. What you're looking at with him is is the receiving ability absolutely. and what he can do in it with that big frame and his explosiveness and all yep. those things. At one point, Pro Football Focus had him ranked as the number one receiving back out of all the backs. Um, he had eight touchdowns in one game. Yeah, against right? Texas Tech. We already said that. That's yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. In, in Kalen Balage, you're looking for. Uh, the second coming of David Johnson, a big dude that can catch. There's the biggest set of shoulder pads on the field. You're just, you're looking for that home run cut right there, just trying to catch lightning in a bottle. For the most part, he's definitely not David Johnson. Oh, I didn't he say not. he was, but if you he, look back, David Johnson wasn't David Johnson until he was on the Cardinals playing in preseason games, and you're like, oh, my God. Well, because if he Johnson was, he wouldn't runs, have been averaging 2.5 in the rookie draft. David Johnson – runs very aggressive and he runs mean and that's sure. pretty evident to see. Well, I'm just saying, but if David Johnson was David Johnson, he sure wouldn't have been going in yeah, 2.5 yeah, yeah. in the rookie draft. My, my point is that most of these games you watch from Balazs, he he doesn't have that aggressive mentality. It's the same kind of knock that I have on Rashad Penny is he won't yeah. he won't go in there with that mentality that I'm going to beat you with He's my shoulder killer. and I'm going to run you over. He's not a killer. He's not a banger. But I will say that UCLA game, though, now yeah. I know they're not the best rush D and I and I know that you know you you we can we can talk about how bad that team was in general, but I don't I don't the the game was in Los Angeles, so I I, I hinted at maybe the the fact that he doesn't kind of bring that aggressive mentality all the time to a game might be based on effort. He's in Los Angeles, he's feeling the vibe. This dude went out there, and he you could just tell it was just a different game from him. And it's at least one game that I can point to and be like, well, and he ran somebody over in the Senior Bowl, so. Well, whatever. <laughs> well, maybe he could start channeling that defensive end part of himself. My my point about this this UCLA game was that it, it was it was a whole game where he basically put the whole game on tape where he showed you aggressiveness, and, and where where his 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 indecision looked more like patience versus indecision, and then he would he would put his shoulder down and he was running dudes over. He was getting extra yards, and it wasn't a crazy statistical game. I think it was only twenty one carries for like ninety seven yards. And there was no touchdowns. I don't even think there were any catches. But he just showed you, like that that potential that you're gambling on here. And at least he showed you at least one time where you can point and say, "Look, I saw him be what I think he could be. I definitely saw it right there. I saw that aggressiveness." And every Sunday in the NFL is like playing in Los Angeles. So all these games are big. It means a lot. I think I feel like there's more people on a general population standpoint. Talking to you every day, just based probably based on fantasy football alone. There's so many people playing that that, that 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 I think I think we could maybe get rid of the effort thing here when he moves to the NFL and he has this ability. And then you got the receiving game on fleet. Like I if, think if you if you don't you got to take not, him. If effort's a problem, it doesn't get fixed from going from college to the NFL. I can promise you that more it's, often than not. I mean, I don't know. Correct. I mean. Maybe if this if this guy wanted to be aggressive and a killer, he'd be aggressive and a killer. I don't think it. The the what you're hoping for is that it will change because if it does change, you get a steal with this guy. Because yeah. if he was running like a lot of these guys that we said above him, he would be at the top of this list, bar none. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so and right now we're talking about this potential upside that could be right. with him rather than him just being a boss. Um, but I, I I don't know. I I think if if efforts an issue, it's not something that usually just gets fixed because now you're getting a paycheck, you know? But, I mean, it could be the... You, you should be playing as hard as you can right now to get the no, I biggest get it. paycheck possible. And normally possible. I'd be all... I'm, I'm pretty much usually taking the safe pick here, and usually I'd be like, let me take Royce Freeman over Balazs because of the safeness yeah. and because I don't have to take a home run cut or let me hit a couple doubles. Well, But, like... I've seen him do it, and I think he can. I think he just needs to get yeah, that mentality. I, mean, I, think, you, I think you can change. I think you can learn how to well, become I think what, a killer. I think what maybe Casey's no. Saying, if you like, at least you know, take take Fournette for instance. He did. I'm not gonna say his ankle wasn't hurt, or like even a Jadavion Clowney, a Gamecock. You put that season together that shows you that shows everybody. You said cock. This guy's better. This right. guy's this guy's on another level. You put that season together, and you're like everybody's talking. You're going to go in the first round of the draft. You're yeah. top three pick. You're top five pick. Maybe then you might. I'm not saying it's right. Well, not saying it's the right thing to do. But maybe sometimes you could you could logically argue if it's smarter sure. or not. And then then you can also say from the other side. Well, maybe now that you pull back a little bit, you get hurt because you're not trying as hard. You know. But the semantics. But the thing is, it's like all right. 
this guy, isn't he hadn't put together eight or 12 games in a row where you're like, damn, this dude's a first-round draft pick no matter what. Yeah. Well, when we talked about it in the podcast, like, you were, you were, there was a ton of hype behind this guy in 16 coming into 17, and you were hoping that he was just about to explode, and it never really happened. And there, maybe it's attributed to a bunch of weird usages of him and, and not the best scheme fit for him, possibly. That's that and, could, and that's all those kind of things. And that, that happens. Yep. I mean, that's, that's a real thing. Yep. Um, my, I wasn't saying that you can't change and be a banger. I, I'm just, I'm saying effort is something that isn't normally going to, if you're not a high effort guy, you're not just going to be like all of a sudden Des Bryant isn't about to be the most high effort guy. It doesn't mean that once he catches the ball, he doesn't run really hard when he has it. Yeah. Just there's probably, if, if he I don't was, think he's quite Des Bryant. I, I think no, I'm not, not and, saying that he was, I was just, and I don't think that it's, I don't think it's a lack of effort as far as efforts sake goes. I think it's where are you focused at effort? Yeah. Right. And if you're, if you're focusing your effort on busting off big plays, then you're not ha- you don't have that short yardage killer mentality, and that's something yeah. I think you can just shift your effort. And when he when he stepped onto the field versus UCLA, they weren't a good team, and he knew he was the best guy on the field, and he played like it. And then it and then it was evident. And I don't think that it mattered who was in front of him at that point when he decided to put his shoulder down and he runs this six two two hundred twenty two pound pound frame into you. There's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't really matter who you are. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I just I think there's some hope. I think he can transition his effort into the right spots. I think he's I think he's a good kid. I think he wants to do the right thing. I think he wants to learn. I think he wants to improve. Yeah. I'm so why, down to take why, this home run cut here. So if he's the home run cut, why is Royce Freeman the safer play? Oh man. I mean he's just he's just everything you want in a back. He's well, like just, a, almost a complete back here. I, w- he could be the best back out of all these dudes we're talking about. Sure, but and before we started talking about Balaj, I kind of alluded to it. It's just like there's there's safety in those numbers. He's yep. he's you know put together a bunch of good seasons. Um, he's big. He's got solid vision. He uses his blocks well. I think he can create on his own. I think he's pretty decent at making that first guy miss. He, I think he's got deceptive speed. I think he's pretty quick. He went through some injuries, but then in, in 17, towards the end of that season, I think he really showed you some short area quickness that he didn't always see. But I, I think that he's got some deceptiveness there to him. And especially for that being such a big dude, I think he can get skinny. I think he's decisive. He's he's aimed at getting upfield. And, I mean, he's a talented dude. He finished seventh all-time in rushing yards with yeah, well, 5,621. Just want to throw that question out there, see how you're feeling. You can't look like you you can't look at his career numbers and say he's not a good football player. That's no. all that's all it is to it. The is dude, the dude dude brings his lunch pail to game to the games yeah. every week. Effort's not an issue with him. Right. Is consistency, he's good. Is nine hundred and forty seven carries too much? Is it like people want to knock him based on the tread? No man, that was the way it used to be. You used to, if you were good, you used to carry it two thousand times in college because there was no leaving early. Back in, I've read that list earlier about the thirty guys over two thousand yards. All of those cats, those guys, those guys that are wearing the gold jackets now, yeah, they mean, carried it. They carried it game after game, especially after game. a guy who's built like he's built. You know, he's he's a tank. Like yeah, so you need, you got a five foot ten, two hundred five foot eleven, two hundred twenty five, two hundred thirty pound tank with. Four years of solid production in and around some injuries, kept playing and tons of catches. Mm-hmm. And when went Royce through, Freeman is safe. Went through good and bad teams while he was there at Oregon. Went through know? a whole coaching overhaul. Two, two of them. Well, no, they're, they're changing this year. So, done. yeah. Well, I mean, the 2015 numbers were absolutely ridiculous 1,800 something yards and, you know, 17 touchdowns. And just in 16, he dealt with, with a knee and ankle and sternum injury and a coach, and that team was just really bad. And yeah. that's why he decided he had a down 16, even though, even though the overall numbers aren't that bad. He decided to come back. You put 79 receptions down. I love that. I think I saw him line out wide some, saw him run some more outs. Most of them were pretty much screens around the line of scrimmage. But you see a little bit of versatility being shown yeah. from not just being running out of the backfield. And, and then I've, I've said it before about other guys. It's something I've been trying to take notice of. You know, when you're pass protecting and you don't have anyone to pass protect, do you break off and do you become an outlet? And he does that just like some of these other dudes that, that I've referred to. I he's listed at 234 pounds on NFL.com. He didn't weigh in at the Senior Bowl. I, I think he's probably trying to cut some weight. I think I'm a little bit intrigued by that. I think if he did cut a little bit of weight, it might make him even more yeah. explosive. And maybe he was 
a little bit lighter at the end of the 17 year, and that's why you saw him a little more nimbly bimbly. Be a little bit more nimbly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'd like to see him cut a little bit of weight. I think he's got really good footwork, and I think the vision really stands out at the top of the list for this guy. It's it's fantastic. Uh, the, the one the knock again that we had on him, just like we did a lot of these bigger backs in this class, is yep. that. Sometimes at the line of scrimmage, maybe relies on patience and getting cute when he should just put that 235 pound frame down right. and hammer somebody. But once he gets past that first level and is 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 rumbling like there's just body parts flying all over the place because he's hammering dudes in the second level for whatever reason. So that that was kind of my observation when I watched him. Yeah. Part of me thinks that sometimes he's he is a little soft at the point of contact. Um, but then the other part of me knows that he had a shoulder injury at one point that he had to deal with. And there are plenty of times where he does have flashes of being a banger and around the goal line. And I, I, like he showed me flashes of being able to get it done, even though it wasn't consistent and sometimes it wasn't there. But, yeah. I mean, I could, I could be persuaded to taking Royce over any of these guys. But right now I think i got to leave him at 11. But I think he's – I think like we started it off with to, to bring a close to it, I think there's a high ceiling – and like huge potential for for Balage, and that interests me. Like you said, being a little further down the list here, and probably down further in the second round kind of area in your draft, maybe end of second even, you could possibly be. And and Freeman's Freeman's pretty safe, and I can't be upset if I get a hold of Freeman in in the mid to late second. Really, in in my opinion. Oh but, no way, not so. I definitely not. I mean, I feel like once the uh, drafts come around, I. There's if you look at a, an overall rookie ranking list, there's wide receivers mixed in. But after last year's crop of running backs made everybody uh, a little bit spoiled, I believe late first round, early second round, people are going right. to be hammering running backs. And, and, and we're not super far into any sort of wide receiver evaluations, but there's definitely not a whole bunch of elite high end talent that I believe that you should even be. Obviously, we're all about drafting running backs, crazy amounts of them in your rookie drafts, mm -hmm. but. If there is an elite wide receiver, I don't have a problem taking him. And there may only be, you know, two or three of those guys that to even consider mixing in with these running backs, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, you said it well. Haven't done a ton of that research. That That's yet to come. But I do feel very good about how much time and effort we put into researching these backs because I think they're going to be heavily factored in throughout your entire rookie draft. You're going to be thinking about, you know, if you're in a 2QB league, you're going to be thinking about quarterbacks. There's a couple tight ends. There's some wide receivers. But really, it's like, all right, I need a back. Which of these backs, backs right am I about it, to take? With some and it just keeps going. We're at 11 here debating whether he's better than number seven. And like yeah. we're deep into 11. There's not the overall crazy elite talent, but there is a ton of depth, and there's a lot of solid swings to take. Absolutely. And pretty excited about this running back class. So we're, leave, we're going Balaj at 11, uh, Royce at 12. No, and, Balaj uh, at, at 10. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Balaj at ten, Royce at eleven, and we'll come back after the break with the last three guys, and we'll we'll kind of put those guys in an order and and discuss. For your pleasure. All right, back to fantasy football. Let's do it. We okay. got some. Let's finish this up. We yes, got sir. some rookie running back rankings to finish up here. We just took you all the way through number eleven, and now we're on number twelve. You guys want to go Mark Walton here? Is that what you want to do? So I think just like we had to talk about Freeman and Balaj and Balaj being the home run cut, and I, I kind of poo-pooed Walton for a minute. I'm going to bring Walton up here and say, I think from the talent, the raw talent aspect that we talked about, you know, he's it's probably he's probably warranted as a as a nice home run cut right here. He's the youngest back out of all these guys, or he's one of the younger backs out of all these guys. I think he's still 20. Um, so that that leans well for him being a little raw, maybe lean, you know, needing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I needing to, to learn a little more in, at the next level. I'm not 100 percent sure, like I said, if he's just a really good athlete or if he is a running back. But there's plenty of time for him to figure that out at the next level. I mean, he's a ridiculous athlete. Yeah, for um, sure. I think he's very quick and explosive, especially when he's healthy. He did deal with two different ankle injuries, one of which ended in surgery, cut his 2017 year short. Not sure why he's maybe not going back to college for another year could really right. boost up his why not stock. Bet on, why not bet on yourself? But I don't know. He's going to go make some money. He's going to get drafted. Um, I think he's got a pretty strong lower body. I really like his physique down there. I think he can get his pads his low. physique <laughs> down there. <laughs> no homo. Uh, that so that's that little <laughs> pretty homo. <laughs> not there's anything wrong with that. Anyway. No, of course not. Obviously. He can get his pads low. I think he can push the pile. 
I absolutely love him running routes out of the backfield. He crushes it well, in the screen game. Absolutely. And a lot of times, the game looks pretty easy for the dude because it's pretty fluid, and he bounces around nimbly bimbly, and he's super little too stop much, and go. A little too much ad libbing, maybe, for me. Maybe needs to get that a little under control. And that's the point that I, that I would want to make is that it seems to be like he's reacting versus anticipating sometimes. And, but his, and maybe knowing, knowing where he should be going and wh- what he should be doing rather than just relying on being so good. It's the athleticism. Right. Helps him cover up, sure. Having to react versus anticipate. So I'm I'm okay with with taking Walton ahead of these guys as kind of a home run cut, but most likely somebody else is going to like Walton more than me. That's true. And take him, and that's fine because I'm actually pretty excited to draft Wadley or Justin Jackson late round as a great pass catching player to really help my team out. Um, and I'm not really 100 percent sure what I'm getting with Walton, except I know he's a He's a blue chip prospect and, and and a really solid athlete. And and another thing to add for a pro for Walton is that he has what they call contact balance. When he 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 does not get put off balance. Like there was a sick play versus Florida State in, back in 2016. It actually got called back due to some yeah. bogus holding penalty that had no effect on the play. But he scored this touchdown where he got spun around and like his dang helmet hit the ground. Yeah. And I guess if your helmet hits the ground, that's not a body part to, to, to put you down. Did not know that. And he stayed up, somehow kept his balance. It was amazing. Spun, spun back around spun and scored. Spun out of it and then scored a touchdown. And like these terrible ACC refs threw this bogus well, holding call. It, it was a hold, but was it had it? nothing to do with the play. I don't know play. if it was a hold. I, it was, I it saw was a, it. It was I didn't a like dumb it. hold. The ACC oh, the refs are just terrible in general. The but holding calls. Overall, dumb. this dude, he he's a bit of a glider. He's a long strider, which I guess could Makes be a, a knock on him. Um, but I think he's got some power to finish some runs, and I think he gets up to full speed almost immediately, and he yeah. gains a lot of ground with that jump cut. There's just a ton of athletic ability that jumps off the screen at you. And and when I started watching this dude right off the rip, I was like, oh, my gosh, Like I got to get this guy. I got to rank him real high. And then it, it took me going throughout the process of really getting into it and rewatching games and – figuring out what was going on with the injury and the teams that he was playing and the games that I was watching to, to and then and then taking into account everybody else I, I like I don't think I want to take him here at 12 right I think I want to take Akram Wadley but it's hard to argue with Walton he does have I think he's got more name cachet he's definitely we've got him farther down on our list than anybody else does I think like DLF's got him at seven or eight they got him pretty high people are probably gonna love him he's probably about to crush the combine and he's probably Can about he, to is he, blow is he up. Is going to be right for the combine? Yeah, I don't know if his ankles going to be good enough to, for him True. to crush the combine. That's a decent point. That could, that could. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll leave it at this. I'm going to go right back to what I said. I think it's a good home run cut on raw athletic talent here, and I can't argue with you. If, if, if you want to snag him here, probably somebody else is going to snag him before I'm ready to snag him. Um, it's not a knock on, you know. I, I'm okay with having him here. I just, I don't love him as much as maybe the, these other guys that you're talking about. And, and and but there's there's this receiving game that's yeah. pretty attractive. Sure. He had 56 receptions for 200 sorry 624 yards in uh, only 30 total games, which that's yeah, pretty that's, solid, that's right? Fantastic. That's enough to draft him right there alone. Right. And I thought uh, I thought he looked pretty pretty solid in pass protection. Um, he's definitely good at chipping and breaking off the line of scrimmage, kind of like these other dudes. And he's got that awareness. I loved him in the screen game. He can break tackles. He also returned kicks his freshman year, so I think that's something that could possibly get him on the field. Yeah, I mean he had he had over a thousand all-purpose yards as a as a true freshman, um, ten total touchdowns as a true freshman. So sure. the dude's got some awesome ability. It's hard to knock him here. I think I I think I think this is a similar conversation. Like we just had this debate between Kalen Balage and Royce Freeman, home run cut versus safeness, and I think. That Walton is a similar Walton versus Wadley and Jackson is a similar conversation, like home run cut versus safeness. And I think that Walton also has the athletic ability to to give me a ceiling higher than the safeness of what he also brings to the table. If that makes sense, it's, a, it's just plus. It's plus side on on the better athlete prospect over Wadley and Justin Jackson from a profile of a body type and athlete standpoint. Is yeah, basically why I'm perfectly okay with slotting him ahead of the, these two guys. And if you want, I guess some people probably have him ahead of Royce. Maybe you have him ahead of a Balazs, you know, 
pick yeah, whatever, he's all, you know, he's, some people have him ahead of Kelly. Yeah, there's definitely a four or five player swing here when you look at a Mark Walton and, you know, Balazs is it's up there on some people's list. Like you, Jay Wayne, I really liked some of the stuff I saw from Mark Walton. I didn't do a ton of study on him like you guys have done, but I, I definitely look super smooth and the pass catching chops make it look good for me. But when you look into study, I'm going to, if you look into Justin Jackson with just four years of stats, kind of like Royce Freeman, um, just jumps off the page at you with consistency. his re- consistency and his receiving ability is off the charts. And then one of the things that really hit home for me with Justin Jackson was Kentucky being a Gamecock. I, I, Kentucky gave us a fit with their defense. We were we were rolling until we played Kentucky this year, and they shut us down. And their defense was really really good. And Justin Jackson goes and just puts in work with twenty something carries and one hundred fifty yards against them in the bowl game to just kind of end his career on a high note. And obviously, Northwestern's all-time leading rusher. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, he's got he, like over eleven hundred carries. So right. we were talking about whether nine hundred was too many for That's, Royce yeah. Freeman. Like he's got so much tread on these tires. Yeah. But like I don't really care. I don't think. Right. Do y'all care? No, I don't care. Tread? No, that's fine. <laughs> no, get give me some. Give me, give that. me somebody that's yeah, been a good, good football player for three yeah. or four years in a row. That you know, just you're going to have people that says, well, if Justin Jackson was that good, he would have come out as a junior. And there's you can ha- you can ha- make that argument if you want to, but a, a, a kid like Justin Jackson who's been good since he stepped on campus and was obviously you to, plays in the Big Ten and plays four years and carries the ball a million times. I mean, he obviously plays hurt because you don't. Play for, play for four years without getting nicked up. He also yeah. did a good job of not getting nicked up. We talked about it in his breakdown. He yeah. took pride in making sure he picked and, his spots and never really took a big hit. Yeah, when, when he, he and in his interviews, he he says how you know that that's part of his that's part of his game, game is that he's he just tries to never set himself up to take the big hit. But his freaking touch touch count in a four year career is is just outrageous. Well, before we get too far into this, we're gonna we're we're all we're okay with Walton at, at the eleven spot Mm-mm. right here. Not me. Not you. I want Wadley. Okay, so <laughs> let's get off of Justin Jackson before we get too far into him here. Okay, and let's. Why do you, what? What you so you want Wadley above Walton? After yeah. everything you just said, I think so. Okay, why? Well, answer this question for me. Can Wadley be? Do you think Wadley can be more than just a third down back? Because no. that's what he's being pegged at. That's what I said, and when we broke him down, I really like Wadley. I like everything he has, but he's not a feature back. You don't think you're going to have more? To, you're going to have to live with that. Like he could be a, a really there, good pass catching back for your team. Is there a he's spot just not going to be a feature? And there's pretty much no chance that he's being your feature back. Is there an in between spot position between being a third down back and a and a feature back? Is there something in the middle of there? Is there like is it either or? Or is there some kind of like mixture of the two? I mean, just because you're getting called the third down back doesn't mean you just only play on third down. I mean, you'll get some second down runs and every once in a while you might get a series. Yeah. Um, that's just not saying that like, you only play on third down, but that's more your thing because yeah. it's probably a most likely a passing situation kind of deal. Or, or maybe you're in second and 20 and in yeah. comes Wadley, you know? Right. I don't know. I just... I just love everything I've seen from Wadley. I think he has very similar athletic ability to Walton. It's not quite as raw and awesome. It's, He's also it's, 188 pounds when when Walton's in the 210 range. 25 to 210. Yeah. The weights, I don't know what to think about the weights well, so the far. Weight, the weight between 205 and 215 and 220 pounds, that's that's can, that's give or take. But when you're 180-something pounds as a running back in the NFL, then you're that you well Wadley was listed over over 190 for a while and then he weighed in at 188 at the senior bowl, senior bowl. Okay. maybe so he in, puts on a few pounds in, in his, to the combine in his program for the team he played for them boys gave him an inch and, and 10 pounds mm-hmm. so, I mean, <laughs> yeah to make him more attractive to but scouts. i think his play uh-huh. i think his play shows oh, that i think he plays much bigger than his weight you, you can go back and listen to the Wadley. we we, we gave him a lot of a lot of love on that he plays much bigger than he is. I just at the next level, that's going to be really everybody tough. Everybody gets bigger, right? Everyone's bigger, faster, stronger, and and just the only being like, I, if he was two hundred, then I'm I'm more in in, in your camp. But a buck eighty eight is tough for me to argue. Hard to get it done. Uh, I and I hate I'll argue the size thing all day long, really. But one eighty eight is tough for me, and I you know I just he does play so much bigger than that. I think he. I think he plays with a mean, aggressive style, but he can get around you. Sure. He has the athletic ability to beat you one on one. He's so elusive. The jump cut mixed with spin move, he's definitely getting five yards out of that. The dude, 
I mean, he just he showed me some some quick, decisive, short runs. I, I just I think he can get it done from a running back standpoint. And then he he can be he can absolutely be the third down back, which yeah. I kind of you know can you be more than the third down back? Like maybe you don't even need to be. I, spe- I mean, right here wh- where we're at drafting, like I'm stoked to either get Justin Jackson or or Wadley because I do think they're going to be great third down backs in the league. Like I'm I'm excited. Give me that. I, yeah, I'll take a, a low end RB two right here in at, at at the fourth round or wherever the hell I'm getting Wadley or Justin Jackson. Like mm-hmm. he, he's please. got sure hands. He runs crisp routes out of the backfield. Seventy one catches over his career. Spent some time at slot receiver. Like spent some practice time in the in the film room and stuff at playing slot wide receiver. Had over thirty catches in each of his first two years. Just was yeah. a workhorse for his team. He put he has the carries. You know he was a workhorse for this team. There's plenty of plus twenty carry games. Where Absolutely going against solid competition too. Yeah, no, I mean you're. I'm just just to clarify what you were just saying there, Casey. If you're going on chalk from DLF's top 50 rookie rankings, Akram, Akram Wadley is at 26, which would be 3-2 in a draft. Yeah. Just because just okay. I know you were day. kind of stabbing at numbers If I could get there. Akram Wadley in the third round, like that would That's be what so I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like You can take Mark Walton in front of me and yeah. uh, on the athletic prowess and, and the, the couple of game, like the pop-off-the-tape things that you see from him off the rip. And, and you know, if... if I'll, I'll take Wadley in the th- middle of the third or whatever, yeah. or Justin Jackson. Probably he's probably might, might not even be on there. Like I'll take either one of those guys. Thirty four, so that would be three ten. And I think you know I'm I'm fine with that. I know I'm probably like I like both of those both of those guys projecting really well as being a third down back. I like both of them a ton. I just don't think that they're you can't have them too high because there's there's not the ceiling isn't like mm-hmm. anything. The ceiling's not the roof. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, they got Jackson at 5'11", 195, and they got Wadley at 5'10", 195. So, yeah, I would kind of boosted him up there a little bit for fun. So, I, I mean, know. we're arguing five pounds here and there and ten pounds. That like, well, it's once the we get to the combine, we'll really about. know what's going yeah. on. And <laughs> Yeah. So, you're sticking with Wadley at 11? 12. Or 12? Yeah. I'll go Wadley at 12. I'll go Walton at 13, and then I'll go Jackson at 14. All right. But I'm super pumped. Super pumped about Jackson. I'm I'm basically gonna go Walton, Akram Wadley just on I like his his shiftiness and athletic profile and that he does play with a little power in the game, but it is real close between him and Justin Jackson. Like mm-hmm. I yeah. really want to go with Justin Jackson. I think 122 receptions is very hard to is is not a look ton. At. And uh, Akram Wadley runs with some testicular fortitude, but Justin Jackson <laughs> brings the heat. Yeah. Well, you like, just don't see and the many. vision. The 122 catches is awesome, but you don't see many people, it, many running backs come out of college with 122 catches and also and a thousand yards every year and 1140 carries. Yeah, you know, so he he's just touching the ball all over the place. I I think Justin Jackson not, doesn't have long speed to finish things up, but he's got a ton of quickness, a ton of burst, and he's runs with a ton of power for the frame that he has. I know we've said that a couple of times now about different guys, but and he's going to get on the field. Pass protection will not keep him off the field he's a he's a smart guy like you said he never takes big shots he played that whole time at northwestern and and hardly got nicked or if he was nicked you didn't hear about it played 13 games every season his rookie season his his freshman year he played 12 games he will absolutely slap you in pass protection um so justin jackson and he comes in on the chips and he'll lay you down efficient in short yard situations too yeah and and constantly seeing them convert third down a, a great patience he'll kind of skip around that line a little bit with with short steps and then wait for his progressions and where he's got to go and then he'll burst through that that spot and he's not afraid to uh put his put his uh pads down to get a couple extra yards phenomenal balance you were talking about the point of the balance of contact justin jackson's is outstanding he does has the same kind of stuff where he's getting hit and spinning to the ground and he's got his hand on the ground and spinning his body three more yards down the down the field you know, yeah, and we talked about him holding his line, awareness. holding his line throughout arm tackles. Like he just, he's he's got the end goal in mind, and he's not going to get tripped up or thrown off track, and he's not going to get off balance. You're yeah. not going to trip him up from behind. You might can catch him from behind, but you're not going to trip him up with some BS arm tackle or or 
you know, he's going to keep his balance. I, I, I love everything about Justin Jackson's game. It's it's hard for me to choose between Justin Jackson and Akram Wadley, just like you stated. Right. I, like, I'm right going to go Akram. Right now, basically, I'm okay with putting Akram Wadley ahead of him because he is quite a bit ahead of him in these rankings here and that you have to take him a little earlier to be able to get a... I'll take both of them. Sure. Yeah. Give me both of these guys, Absolutely. but I'm going to keep Wadley just ahead of him just because he is, he's got a little bit more name cachet to him. He's a little bit higher up the list, and I'll, I'm just going to keep him ranked at that at this point in time, whether it's stupid or not, ahead of Justin Jackson for that reason. All right. Second, we, is that we a did wrap? It. We did it. We got through 14? Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and recap it for well, everyone's pleasure a, here. A quick little, we, there's obviously some guys that we probably left out and, and didn't get to all these guys. Maybe there'll be guys who creep up. It's February 10th, 10th. or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, if, if, don't be upset that we didn't talk about Ido Smith up here or somebody else who you really like. We just didn't get that far down the line of breaking guys down out of the guys we broke down and the guys that we thought we should break down. This was the list that we came up with. So without further ado, the actual rankings that we had, if you listen to the last couple shows, went like this. We had Barkley at one. Obvi. Obvi. Geis at two. Sure. Pretty obvious. Gotta. That's obnoxious. Obviously. <laughs> I had I can't had, say it twice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once is borderline I, right. I had Chubb at three. Jay Wayne had Chubb at four. I had Sony and at had three. Sony at three, and Big Co's Sony at three as well. I was in the minority there. We all had Carry On at five. We got Rojo at six. We got Penny at seven. We got Adams at eight. We got Kelly at nine. Uh, we got Balage at ten. Royce at eleven. Walton at twelve. And then there's a little bit of mix up at the end here, but basically, I think we all three have a different. Yeah. Well, you guys have Walton, I got Akram, and then I'll go Walton, and then Justin Jackson. Big Co, you got Walton, Justin Jackson, Jackson Wadley, Wadley. I'm going Walton, Wadley, Jackson. You got all that. You yeah. got it marked down. That's, you figured out which one it is. That's 14 for us right now. Pretty soon here, kids. I promise we will have a website. Oh, I it's coming so soon. On our website, lady. It's. Definitely about to come. We're going to get some rankings up there for you guys so you can see these all laid out. But we basically just gave you several hours on what we think about these rankings up to this point. And they're all going to change uh, <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> <a couple> of weeks. <laughs> Throw it out the window. It was all for your pleasure. Yeah, just in case you ha happen to have some stupid draft before the NFL <laughs> draft. Get that <laughs> shit figured out. But anyways, thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs> We are the FF Dynasty. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at the FF Dynasty. We have our own individual handles. You can find Casey at... I am C. Myers. You can find Big Co. at... Dynasty Big Co. You can reach me at J. Wayne's World. If you liked anything about today's show, please go on to iTunes and give us a five-star review. All you got to do is hit the little five stars, write up something if you feel so inclined. You don't have to. Hit subscribe on any of your platforms of choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. And then, big news, if you listened to last week's show, you know we are nominated for Charleston's Best Local Podcast. Please go on to charlestoncitypaper.com. Check out the 2018 Best of Ballot. We are under the Culture, Arts, and Entertainment section. Little hint. If you're having trouble, you got to use a Charleston zip code 29403. We'll cut it. Go down and vote for us, Best Local Podcast. We would be greatly appreciative. What we're going to do is if you send us a screenshot via any any social media, you can send it to us on Twitter, send it to us in, a, in an email uh, at the, F, the FF Dynasty at gmail.com. Send us a screenshot showing that you voted for us, and we'll put you in a raffle to win a free T-shirt. A free FF Dynasty T-shirt. We're gonna put them all in a raffle. Trying to trying to get on the local scene. We have a little bit of a of clout yeah. here in Charleston, but it's a great city. It's a great town. We wanna we wanna get our name out there even more. We're on the list, and we got to make it to this party, baby. We yeah. got to get to this. Got to get to the ball. Got wanna, to. How is it? Is it a little pretentious that the best of the best local Charleston party? On the nomination is it's the, the best of no, the got, Charleston got City paper. It's a great party. Yeah, it's a, it's a great party. party. We're trying to go to that party. We'll film. We'll film us at the party. And, and well, you guys are putting words guys. into my mouth. I, that, I assume I'll be the one filming. I mean, I have, with a I cell phone. Have a, I have a cell like phone, cell phone camera. Video, not <laughs> like professional, professional services. Oh, yeah, so you, you will take video. It might not be good video. Is yeah, what you're well, saying. yeah, I'm probably going to be hammered. <laughs> be good video. But you guys can help us get there. Please go on and vote for us. That would be so awesome. And like we said, we'll enter you into a raffle to win a t-shirt thank you so much for listening till next time you've been listening to the ff dynasties married to the game peace